Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today we are doing a really special project for me because it will solve me a problem that I have uh, here at the house and that is to make a device that will be able to monitor the pallets level that I have in my pallet burning stuff that I use to heat my house and to do that we will use one of these HCSR04 ultrasonic distance sensors that looks something like this. The way that this device operates is it has one transmitter and one receiver and it sends an ultrasonic pulse that is then reflected and detected from the other sensor. It's connected to the Arduino board via four pins so we have ground on the far left and VCC on the far right. It can work from 5 volts but uh, also from 3.3 I think 5 volts will be better. And then we have the echo and the trigger pins that we uh, use to collect the data. The pallet stove looks uh, exactly like this. So on the left, we have the burner and the heat exchanger on top. Here is the controller. And on the right, this is uh, the holding mechanism. So it holds up about six bags of wood pallets that you open this lid on the top and uh, we pour it in. And that's good for usually about uh, four to five days. and. Currently, I just go and regularly top it up with uh, with pallets, but I want to add a device that will be mounted on the lid. So whenever the lid is closed, it will measure the level or uh, to be more precise, it will measure the distance from the lid to where the level of the pallets is. And that uh, will be mapped to show me uh, whether I have low, medium or if it's uh, full and the idea is that i'm gonna then have a notification that uh, will finally do with the home assistant to show me when i need to top it up but before doing that let me tell you about today's sponsor which is altium designer as someone who's always juggling electronic projects i found that altium designer is the perfect companion it's like having a pcb design assistant who is as intuitive as it is intelligent helping me zig through designs with precision whether it's schematic capture or laying out a board but the game changer for me, it's all about Altium 365. It is this incredible electronics development platform that Altium has seamlessly integrated. Whether your team is down the hall or across the globe, you can work together in real time. It's like being in the same room, even when you're not. And that's a lifesaver when it comes to beating those tight deadlines. Plus, there is something truly comforting about having all my data managed and sync within the cloud-based Altium 365 environment. It's secure, clear, and organized. I never have to second guess if I'm working on the latest version of a design and with a direct line to components and supply chain info, it's like having an extra set of eyes to make sure everything is just right. If you're into PCB design and want to streamline your process, experience efficiency and collaborate like a pro, you should definitely check out Altium Designer and get on the Altium 365 train too. Visit the link in the video description to get a free trial and a 25% discount on any license. Here I have the sensor connected to a VMOS D1 mini board where I'm powering it from 5 volts. So VCC is connected to 5 volts and ground is connected to ground. While the echo pin is connected to D7 and the trigger pin is connected to D6. And this allows me to make sure that uh, both the controller and uh, the sensor works. I have a simple code that run on the ESP8266 that allows me to use this as a measuring device. So let me show you that. And here on the Arduino ID in the serial monitor, you see that I have uh, the distance in both centimeters and inch as measured of the device. And it's currently sitting here uh, at my bench. If I put my hand, in front of it, you'll see that the distance changes. It's now about, I don't know, 20 centimeters. So, um, and currently it's, yeah, it's measuring around 18, 19. And this would, again, depend slightly on how I keep my hand, um, the angle of the hand. But if I come closer, that distance shrinks. Uh, it's currently about 10 centimeters, 12. And I can go very close to about here is sh saying five centimeters. And if I go further out, then it's again back to 20. Uh, now it's 35. And if I remove my hand, then it goes to about a meter and 40 centimeters, which is the distance from here next to the wall on the other side. 
to be able to figure out how far the, the sound wave traveled, we use a simple sketch where we have uh, the two pins set one is output and the other one is input. So we have D6 and D7. We have some constants defined here to be able to measure. So this is the velocity of uh, sound as it travels through air. And this one is just a conversion from centimeters to inch. And the way that we measure is that we set the trigger pin high for 10 microseconds. And then we set it to low. And then we use to read the pulses uh, from the echo pin that would tell us the duration in microseconds. So how, how long it took for that sound that we sent to, to come back. And we multiply that with the half of the sound velocity to get the distance in centimeters. And then we multiply like that uh, with the constant to inch to get the inches. And then we display those in the serial console. So pretty straightforward and easy to understand sketch. But our goal is to move this to Home Assistant. So now let's try to flush it with Home Assistant and figure out how we can interact the sensor within Home Assistant. And here is the updated device now running ESP Home and I have a box here to serve me as a indicator of the levels. So the further away the box goes, that, that means that we are running lower and lower on pellets and this would be the maximum uh, value of it. So if we go to Home Assistant, we can see the device that it's now reporting the pellet level to be 100% and the distance to be measured around 7 centimeters. And as I move the box away, so you see that that distance increases and as the distance increases, the percentage level drops. So if I go further down, then it goes to 60, 50 now. And if I remove the box entirely, that goes to about a meter to the next obstacle. And that uh, is translated to 0%, even if I go a bit further. So let's try and measure something that's one and a half meters away. So that's the wall on my right. The output is always uh, to zero. And if I return back the box, then we are back to some percentage. We could display this on a card with a level gauge. And as I move the box, that level will change to reflect the position. So it's a bit sensitive when you're moving the box and not really providing the right angle to have the sound wave bounce back but once it's steady it's quite okay and stable and i would also add some filtering to this so not every value will be reported and also not uh, so often because now i just have it uh, refresh every second just for demonstration purposes but in reality this would be uh, refreshed once every 10 minutes or so so now if we go to the code we'll see that we have a sensor uh, that's ultrasonic and I named it distance sensor. The trigger pin is still connected to pin D6 and the echo pin is connected to D7. I named it as the ultrasonic sensor and this is what we see here. The update interval is one second and then later on I'll add the median filter. This would, uh, I think, calculate uh, the average of the last uh, five measurements so we don't have huge jumps in the measuring and that would extend the time so if i have 10 seconds here so or the defaults to 60 seconds that would update once a minute but the median will extend that to once every five minutes so that should theoretically give us uh, a bit of a more stable value and, and the pallets are not really uh, spent that fast so it should be fine and to convert that distance to a percentage level, I'm using a template uh, here. So uh, I named it pallet level with an unit of measure of 1% uh, that's updated every one second. And what I do here is to mimic the map function from Arduino. So I took 0 0.8 meters and 0 0.1 meter as the absolute uh, minimum and maximum. So 0 0.8 meters. And anything above that will mean that the container for the pallets is empty and 0.1 or 
anything less than 10 centimeters will mean that the container is full. I'm calculating the value uh, based on the map function from Arduino uh, to map it between zero and 100%. And because this can go beyond one meter, then if anything, if I get a value that's above 100, I always clamp it to 100%. And the same, if I get a value below zero, I always clamp it to zero and then I return that value. And that's how this value here is updated based on the movement. And you can see if I go to, so 0 0.8 and 9, it should be 100. But even if I go a bit closer, uh, the sensor will detect that. So 0 0.4, so three centimeters now, it still reports 100 because I don't want to be that precise in that level. But when we go further apart, then we're down to um, close to 27 centimeters and it's uh, down to 76%. And the further I go, the lower it will get. So with everything working, now the final challenge would be to create an enclosure and mount this to the pellet boiler. I plan to make an enclosure. I still don't know how I'm going to make it, but the idea is that I'm going to mount the sensor in between the, uh, the lid. So there is a small gap uh, in there where I think I could fit the sensor if it's uh, small enough with some magnets, have the wires running outside and then the VMOS D1 uh, mini board will be housed in an electrical box outside that will be powered from the local power source with the power adapter so it's always on uh, but uh, this would be inside and I think I'm gonna stick it with magnets on the underside so let's see how that goes. The obvious solution is that I would create uh, an enclosure with a 3D printer but unfortunately I do not own one so I have to improvise in the moment. And here is the final version of the pallet monitor. I used the enclosure from a power supply from an LED light to mount the ultrasonic sensor where I drilled holes for the uh, transmitter and the receiver. And on the back side, I've added two magnets so I can stick it on the underside of the lid for the pellet storage where there are. So let's pop this in. I have added uh, this thin cable that I'm planning to have it running under the lid when it's closed and that is directly soldered to the VMOS D1 and for powering I'm using an old phone charger that outputs 5 volt and everything is housed inside this enclosure uh, which is uh, just a regular electrical box. Now with everything ready, I've tested this and it's working. So let's go downstairs and mount the whole thing to the underside of the lid and connect it to start monitoring the pellet level. Now, this wasn't an easy thing to film all by myself. So I only managed to get footage after I installed it. So here you see the electrical box sitting on the corner of the pellet stove and then the sensor is stick to the underside of the lid and you can see that it looks directly into the pellet level there is a, like a cone shape down in the bottom so we'll see how that goes with the measuring over time but all the wires go on the back and i plug the phone charger in an outlet that i have on the back now here is uh, with the pellet stove running and we'll see how it goes on the long run And that is now the sensor installed and this is the current level as you saw it does fluctuate a bit but uh, we'll see how that goes I'll have it running for for a while currently it's only running for about like few minutes and this is the data that we got before turning on the median and extending the measuring time and this is after so you see we get a much smoother result and this is the final code where now the update interval is on every 10 seconds and that's the same for the percentage value as well. And there is a filter applied that takes the average of the last five measuring and only then applying that as a, as a value on the percentage. So I'll have it running for a few days, see how that goes and see if I will need to adjust the minimums and maximums here in terms of the level. And only then I'm going to continue with adding any notifications. 
Uh, for now, I'm going to end the video here. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers. Oh, yes. And don't forget to subscribe.